Bishop Fisher, it is a, a true joy to welcome you once again to St. Gregory's. I think you were in Buffalo two weeks before your first visit, and now uh, your third visit to us. We're so honored to have you here, and we are so thankful for your yes to, to come to serve as our shepherd here in the Diocese of Buffalo. And tonight, as we celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation, I would like uh, to present to you our candidates. If our candidates, those to be confirmed tonight, would please stand. Just our candidates to be confirmed. Now, as you know, Bishop, this is only half of them, and fortunate for us, both halves tonight and tomorrow night, they're both the best. Both the best. They're all the best. And uh, they truly are. Now, in my eighth year here at St. Gregory's, I've watched many of these young people grow and mature. And the, despite the pandemic, the limitations of education still completing very faithfully, both in Catholic school as well as our family faith program, uh, completing their studies. Some made an in-person retreat in early in the fall before we went to the second lockdown, and the rest uh, completed their retreat virtually as we put together a virtual retreat. They are people dedicated to service, not only now in preparation for confirmation, but, but every year through their formation. And uh, it is my pleasure and joy to present them to you and humbly ask on behalf of our people of St. Greg's that you uh, confer the sacrament of confirmation for them. Again, thank you, Father. Please be seated. And once again, I, I always get a wonderful warm reception here at St. Gregory's, so it's wonderful to come back. I think it's one of the first parishes I came to visit. We had a meeting, actually, with all of our priests at that time. And uh, then, of course, as I said, this past Saturday, we ordained uh, 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 now Deacon Joe Tokaz to, uh, to the uh, transitional diaconate. And God willing, next year, we'll ordain him to the priesthood. Uh, we have four men who will be ordained to the permanent diaconate this coming Saturday, and then after that, we have four men who will be ordained to the priesthood. Uh, I've had an opportunity also to travel up to Niagara Falls there, uh, uh, where I received the permanent vows of uh, two of the uh, Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And so I, I, I'm not letting grass grow under my feet, and I'm trying to get out and, and to visit uh, all of our parishes and, and uh, get in uh, to visit our schools. But uh, one of the things that I always enjoy uh, are the uh, getting out to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. And uh, as many of you are aware, this past year has been a, quite a challenge in those regards. I know last year, I think we went through a, practically a whole year where, where uh, uh, we weren't really able to fully celebrate the sacraments uh, like that as we should. Hopefully we're coming out of that. We're coming out of that. But uh, tonight is a, a, a time of joy. Um, normally, I'm supposed to ask some questions uh, of our confirmandi, and I don't want them to be nervous. This should be a night of joy for them. Uh, and, uh, but I know they already know the answers, as, as Father was sharing. I, I know you've been well prepared, and you know all of the answers. Uh, I'm just going to ask you to maybe help me a little bit as we reflect on what we are doing here. Why are we celebrating the sacrament of confirmation and what does it mean for us? I know we're kind of spread out. This is a large, beautiful, large church. So uh, if I have to come out into the congregation, I'll put, I'll put my mask on. I am vaccinated, so uh, I've, got, I've had my rabies shots and all those sort of things. So, <laughs> so, so we're, 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 good, we're good to go, we're good to go. Just a, a little hint, if you don't know the answer, probably the answer is baptism, okay? The answer is baptism, because everything flows from that. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, because of our baptism, because of our baptism. You had these beautiful readings. I think the readings tonight really also reflect the season that we're in. 
You know, this coming weekend, we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, that gift that Jesus, that God gives to our church of the Holy Spirit. And it's the same gift that we are celebrating tonight in the sacrament of confirmation. But all of the readings really point to, to, to God and God's grace and what he has done for, for all of us. And I ask first that question, why are you here? How did you get to this point that you're here in the church seeking to be sealed with that gift of the Holy Spirit? Well, I know our first reading from Ezekiel, you know, we hear about how the water is sprinkled on and, and gives strength and meaning to, God, to God's uh, people. We also have the, uh, from the book of Acts, that time of Pentecost, when that gift of the Holy Spirit comes down upon the apostles and they're changed forever. You know, they're, they're baptized in the Spirit and they, they go out, they're courageous. They're courageous for the faith. They, 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 they're not hiding anymore. They're not running away. They're not betraying Jesus. They're, they're now doing his will. They're going out to baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What is it that changed them so profoundly and made them such zealot, zealot men and women of the faith? that Holy Spirit. You know, I have to say that all of our young men and women who come here this evening and present themselves for this, this sacrament, you're courageous. So if there's one gift that you're exercising right now, it's courage. It's not easy to be a Catholic or a Christian these days, to stand up for our faith and to proclaim our love, our love of Jesus Christ. It's not easy to do that, to try to live a life of holiness that each one, by virtue of our baptism, are called to. You're courageous, so I commend you for that. But why are you here? How did you get here? In a few minutes, I'm going to have you all stand, and you'll renew your baptismal promises. So as I said, everything kind of began at your baptism. You know, your parents loved you so much. They've given you, their, they've given you their life. They've given you good clothes to wear. Here in Buffalo, I know you need warm clothes in the winter, I'm learning that. <laughs> um, I'll be experiencing your summer soon, yeah. And then uh, good food and good health. They, they want the best for you, good education. These are things because they love you. But the most important thing that they did and your godparents did for you is to give you their gift of faith. They brought you to the church and presented you. And for the first time, your name was proclaimed in public. Michael William Fisher. It's the first time my name was proclaimed like that. And then any time I heard it in that way after that, I knew my mother was upset at me. <laughs> yeah. But our name was proclaimed publicly in that way. Yeah, and, and it was there that we came, became a part of God's family. We, baby, we, we became a part of the church. We were loved and wanted and needed. And that's why we're here. But we're, we were also called to be like Christ. Christ who came to show us the way. The season of Easter and Pentecost is a time of joy. It's a time of the good news where Jesus, who became a human being, he came to bless our humanity. It's what Christmas is about. And he showed that we are a part of that in his life, his death, in his resurrection. You know, Ezekiel, our first reading, is also that prophet where we hear about the dry bones you know, the song, Dry Bones, Dry Bones, you know, uh, where we see the bones scattered across the desert. You know, the ultimate sort of sign of death. We also know in that same thing that those bones were resurrected. But it's more than just dry bones being resurrected. Jesus rose to glory. 
He had a glorified body. We, we, we've been reflecting on Sundays about Jesus and how he sort of is enjoying his resurrected body, his glorified body. He's going around and eating and, and telling stories with his, his disciples, giving them the courage now to take the good news of his resurrection out to all that they meet and drawing them into the faith. Jesus, who, who we're not quite sure what a resurrected or a glorified body is, but it has to be something so magnificent beyond our understanding right now. But we will be able to participate in that. And that's, our good, that's the good news. That's what the gospel is, is all about. And we're called, through that gift of the Holy Spirit, to embrace that good news, to embrace that good news. And baptism is where we begin. Baptism is where we're called to live a life of holiness. To live a life of holiness is to be like Christ. We were given that grace, that grace of God, that grace of God. So why do you need to be confirmed tonight? So I have kind of a diff, I don't know, maybe it's an easy question for some of you. But the question that I would ask is, are you here tonight to be confirmed because you need to validate what your parents and your godparents did for you at baptism? In other words, you are standing up, you're going to renew your baptismal promises like mature people so that what your parents did for you sort of takes hold and is valid. Think about that. How many say yes? That's the reason here. How many say no? How many don't know? The answer is no. You're not here to validate what your parents did in having you baptized and what happened at that baptism. They love you very much, and what they did was an act of love, but it has nothing to do with what happened to you in your baptism. God is the one who was the mover in that. He is the one that imparted his grace on you and said, you're mine. I place my seal upon your heart, your soul, your life forever. And I call you to walk with me into eternal life. Your life should be about getting to eternal life. And it begins at baptism. And it was because of what God did for you that you're here today, that you're here today. So does it mean, now, we, we hear a lot when we talk about confirmation about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that, that uh, you're going to be sealed with that gift of the Holy Spirit. Does that mean tonight is the first time you're receiving the Holy Spirit? You know, that, that uh, tonight you're receiving the this, this, this Spirit so that now you have all the gifts that you need. How many say tonight? First time you're receiving that Holy Spirit. How many say yes? How many say no? <laughs> How many don't know? Huh? Okay. You say no, right? The answer is no. When did you receive the Holy Spirit for the first time? If you don't know the answer. Baptism. 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 It all flows from baptism, right? You receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. So why are you here? What do you need? Why do you need to be sealed whoop, with the gift of the Holy Spirit? I tend to use my hands a lot when I'm talking. So. Huh? What's it all about? Well, when we are baptized, we're receiving a gift from God, aren't we? We're receiving his grace and his life. But when we're confirmed, it's kind of like two sides of the same coin. We're called to go out, to go forth, to take those gifts that are already in our life 
and to now let them animate our life to help us in our call to holiness. I began uh, my reflection tonight by talking about the different vocations that I've been in, uh, the, the ordinations, and lots of marriages are taking place at this time. You know, as we get older, our decision-making becomes more and more difficult, doesn't it? Because eventually we have to make that decision, that decision of how we're going to live out our lives in relation to, to, to our, our call to holiness and in our relationship with our Lord Jesus. Some of us may be called to be husbands and wives in the sacrament of marriage, where we're called to get that other person to heaven, where hopefully we live out our vocation and it helps us grow and bring meaning of holiness to our life. Maybe we're called to be a father, a mother, to form family in that marriage, to be a reflection of Christ's love for his church. Maybe we're called to be a priest or a deacon, a religious, to, to lead others to Christ in a more sort of deeper way of service. Maybe some of us are called for a time to be single, you know, where we have that time and focus to, to devote to charity and the service of our brothers and sisters and to, to our community. These are the things that these gifts of the Holy Spirit are meant to help us with, so that that grace that was given to us is pure gift at our baptism now animate us so that we can go out and use those gifts to build up God's family and to, to bring others to Christ. So it's about receiving and it's about giving, but all of the same coin. Huh? And tonight, you come full circle. You've, re you've received, you'll receive all three of those sacraments of initiation and be a full member of the church and be equipped and strengthened with all you need. Now, question that I would like to ask, and maybe some of our confirmandi will raise their hand and maybe want to share their thoughts on this. I'd like you to think about just one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I know you have, have already uh, reflected on them and prayed about them. I'm not going to ask you to recite them, but because I, I know you know what they are. Wisdom and understanding and right counsel, judge, right judgment, counsel. We also know that there are fruits when we exercise those gifts. That's reflected in, in our countenance, in our life. Maybe it's a sense of joy, a, gen, a sense of peace, a sense of charity. Okay. But I'd like you to think for a moment about one particular gift or fruit that you'd like to be reflected in your life at this time. And why? Just a short, short why. So what's a gift you'd like to ask for maybe tonight? Your turn, okay? As I say, this is always where I lose eye contact, Father. <laughs> so, how about some hands? I'll come down to you. Okay. We don't have to pick on the center aisle either. Okay. Just one gift. Think of a gift and why you might like that tonight. Remember, you're courageous, huh? okay? There we go. Yes, sir. Hope, wonderful. Why do you want hope? And it also gives us something to look forward to, right? Grace, thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Hope. Oh. How about another one? Just one more, huh?
There we go. Yes, sir. Courage. Okay, and we just talked about that, but you must have a good reason yourself, huh? And what is it? Wonderful. It helps you get through the hard times. We, we need that sort of strength of God, right? Good job. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you, though, now, is just to continue to reflect and pray about that. In the years ahead, you will, uh, you will need to maybe different gifts at different times, but that Holy Spirit is there to always provide that for you. Okay, now, before we go on to our renewal of baptismal promises, just a few more things. Tonight, we're going to be using a particular oil, okay, an oil that's blessed at the cathedral during Holy Week. And do we know what the name of that oil is? Okay, somebody know the name of the oil? Hmm? Yes. Chrism, perfect. Good job. <laughs> Let's see now, Father, where is your Ambry? Oh, okay. It's usually near the baptismal font over there. Um, and it, we have in every church, there is an Ambry where three oils are, are, are kept. And again, those are blessed at the Chrism Mass during Holy Week at the cathedral, uh, I gathered with our priests and deacons and, and our laity, and we, we had the chrismas where we bless the oil, the three oils. First is the oil of the infirmed. That's used by Father when he goes out to anoint our, our priests. They go out to anoint the sick, to strengthen them, and to hopefully bring them healing. And then there is the oil of the catechumen, which is, is given at baptism, a little bit on the chest of the baby, and that signifies that child is being strengthened from sin, strengthened with God's grace. It's also used for those who are coming into the church at that time. And then there is the oil of chrism, and usually that is the last oil to be blessed, uh, I, use, I go down to this big vat of, uh, of regular olive oil, and then they give me some perfume to put into it. We pour that in, kind of stir it up, and I blow a cross into the oil, representing the Holy Spirit coming down into that oil. But there's such a beautiful aroma that comes up and fills the senses, the nostrils. You're going to smell that tonight. And my, I, I pray, my prayer for you is that you never forget the smell of that oil. You know, chrism is used for priests to anoint their hands at their ordination. It's poured over a bishop's head when he's made a bishop. That was a messy day for me. Yeah. But is it tonight it will be on your forehead, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you will say... Amen. Peace be with you. And you will say, and with your spirit. Right. Is this the first time you're receiving the oil of chrism? How many say yes? How many say no? How many don't know? When did you receive chrism for the first time? <laughs> Baptism. All right. Baptism. Little bit was placed on the crown of your head where you received that dignity of Christ of being a priest, prophet, and a king. A priest because we share that common priesthood of our lives should be one of sacrifice of praise and prayer to our God. A prophet because we're called to go out and to share the good news with others. What a prophet does, calling others to, to God. And finally, a king because we're part of a royal family. We have that dignity as a child of God, a child and a brother, sister to our Lord Jesus. So this is a wonderful, wonderful night as we experience that oil. Finally, I, just a little story, and uh, we'll be ready here for our, our renewal of baptismal promises. 
Not long ago, I uh, went back to a parish of mine that, that I had been pastor at, and um, I celebrated the sacrament of confirmation. And after the confirmation was finished, a young lady came up to me and she was just animated. The Holy Spirit was dancing in her eyes. And she looked at me and said, Father Mike, do you remember me? I said, well, uh, I just confirmed you. She said, no, you baptized me too. And I know Father was talking, we were talking at dinner about his experience of of, of those that he's baptized and, and, and now marrying and uh, giving them First Communion. Those are such special moments, I know, to, certainly to us as priests and, and deacons and, and bishops. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it also showed that full circle, again, of the sacraments, baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist, and how it draws us again together as a family also made me feel a little old, you know. But then after that, she said to me, Bishop, I've been infested by the Holy Spirit. (laughs) And I just love that, that image of being infested, just completely covered by the Holy Spirit. As you experience the aroma of that chrism oil on your forehead, that you take all of that into your senses, always be reminded that the Holy Spirit is there for you, the Holy Spirit of God who loves you, wants to be with you, to strengthen you, and to guide you and to help you in this world, to help you in your life so that you can help others in our world, our community, and our church. God bless you. Let us now prepare to renew our baptismal promises.